This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Tanya Spenz, who is with the Real Fun Ice Fishing Tournament. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Nancy. You know, in December, I was getting a little nervous about this mild weather that we had. I live on the lake and it's beautiful, and, but with this cold temperature, we're going to have enough ice. Oh, absolutely. Not worried about it at all. And there's a couple of changes this year with the Real Fun Ice Fishing Tournament, which um, I guess, first of all, start us off about the Real Fun. I know what it is, everyone in the area should, but in case people don't know, tell them what the premise of it is. Okay, well, the uh, Real Fun Ice Fishing Tournament is a fundraiser for the Future River Center, and this is our eighth annual wow. um, tournament. So we've been doing this eight years in a row, and it gets more and more popular. Um, essentially, this is a, a three-hour tournament on the ice. All the holes are pre-drilled. We only sell 1,000 tickets, and we award prizes to the top 30. Um, fish this big and fish this big can win. So it's, it, it's a fun, equal playing field, a really unique event to our area, and we've been holding it on Grand Lake every year. And the top prize is what's pretty phenomenal. Yes, this is what really draws people in. Um, the 30 prizes, actually, it's over $15,000 yes, in prizes for 30, but our top prize is a... Um, 2016 John Deere Gator, a side-by-side -side from our local Alpina Gambles. So um, whoever catches the biggest fish is going to walk away that day with a new, you know, $8,000 plus side-by-side. -side. It almost makes me want to fish on the ice. Well, you almost. should. You should. You should. It's fun. <laughs> and the other thing is the change of date this year. Yeah, we used to do it on free fishing weekend because we thought we might have a lot of anglers that don't necessarily fish, or non-anglers, excuse me, that don't really have licenses, but we didn't find that to be the case. And the other thing is, is that... Um, we need things to do in Northeast Michigan in the winter, right. and during free fishing weekend, there's all sorts of tournaments. So instead of competing with other tournaments, we just moved our weekend out one week later to the 27th of February, and we're hoping for a little bit better weather because oh, it'll we've be had some. By then. We've had some brutal weather in the yes. past six years, and I think we had two good years, and uh, we just decided to pump it out to the 27th so that people can go to like the the Hillman tournament and the one in Oscoda or wherever, Hubbard you know Lake, what I mean? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So we're not all competing with each other for free fishing weekends. So this, the big change this year is that if you're fishing, you will need to have a license. Okay, and to combat that frigid weather, you're going to have that large tent again this year. Yes, last year, um, towards the last minute, we got a large 80-foot enclosed tent, and it was a savior. Um, this year, we are getting it again, hoping to hold more um, vendors. We might have a couple um, energy drink vendors coming oh, good. to just promote their products. Frank's Great Outdoors is there every year, and they bring, well, last year they brought hand warmers, yes. which was a save, um, yes. saving grace as well, um, selling um sweatshirts and things like that. And then our top sponsor, Top of Michigan, is always there and they give away hot cocoa usually every year and I assume they're gonna do that as well this year. But that'll be housed in the tent, which is nice. And also in the tent while people are waiting, the Thunder Bay Walleye Club is there and they sell raffle tickets and they give away great prizes. They're giving away um, Vexlar ice deucers and they give away augers usually okay. and all sorts of different um, great gifts so people can buy some raffles there. And then we have a food vendor Ooh. cooking for a cause is there and they usually have hot food and drinks that you can purchase on the ice so it's you know it's not just all about the fishing and the fishing's only from um, noon till three but people get out there at nine and so you're you're hanging out on the ice doing different things visiting with friends people are setting up little camps and cooking and and fun. you know the thing the fun thing about your tournament too is like you said if you get a fish this big or fish this big it depends on where you catch it when you catch it and um, you can get a fabulous prize. Absolutely. And w the way we set up the uh, the prize list is first prize is obviously the best, and the right. top five prizes are some of the more desirable. But then just to make it interesting, 30th place, which would be last place, is one of the better prizes. Yes. It's, a, it's a great shanty that we got from Frank's Great Outdoors. It's a, it's a huge shanty, so that's one of the better prizes. So you might be in 20th place and get bumped down into a better prize. So Yay. it's very cool. And how much are tickets? Tickets are $25. Okay, and where can we get them? You can get them at Top of Michigan. You can go to um, Alpena Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Clems. All right. Bait and Tackle, uh, Bucks Bait and Tackle, and A1 Woods and Waters. Okay. This year. And then also we have our, our Friday event, which is Festivus, the night before at the Aplex. Right. Tickets for those are at um, Alpena Chamber and at um, Top of Michigan as well. 
And Festivus is always a fun time too. It is, and this year we're having a new caterer. JJ's is catering it. Okay. We're doing a pasta bar, so people make their own pastas, okay. salads, and desserts, okay. and, a, and a cash bar. All right, we still have some time, so tell me what some of the other prizes in the big list are going to be. Well, um, we got we have we have two uh, power um, power augers, which are big. We, I think we have four different shanties. We have a Vexlar ice deucer. We have clothing gear, some great um, gift certificates from Frank's Great Outdoors, so you can buy whatever you want. Ooh. We have um, a, a smoke hollow uh, smoker. Okay. Because a lot of people want to smoke their fish after they catch them. We also this year are giving away a Yeti cooler. I don't know if you're familiar with Yeti coolers. They're a great cooler. They're really kind of expensive, and nobody really ever wants to buy them. You want them, but you're not going to spend the money. So this year, hopefully, somebody can win Ooh. a really great cooler. Um, for uh, the hundredth fish weighed in, wins a 42-inch. I think it's a 42-inch TV wow. that's been donated by Walmart. Um, then we also are uh, giving away more prizes at Chinese auction at the oh, Festivus, okay. and there should be great gear there: fishing rods, donated um, uh, boat tours oh, from yay. NOAA, and so we have a lot of things giving away that day as well. Okay, sounds good. And uh, the date again is? February 27th on okay. Saturday. The night before on Friday is the Festivus at the Aplex. Okay. Um, we have sold out tickets in the past for the Festivus, I so I would get those now. And then as far as the fishing tournament, I, we've come close to selling out many yes. times, So I, and, or typically towards the end it's been difficult to get tickets. So I would get those now. And I would also secure um, housing in the area if you're from out of town and you need a hotel. Um, people had a hard time yeah, last year finding a I hotel. Remember. So. And once again, you drill a thousand holes, only a thousand tickets are sold. Mm -hmm. You can buy more than one ticket if you want a couple of holes. Exactly. And there's like a shotgun start, you yeah. run out, everybody gets their hole. Um, you can only have certain things with you. There's lots of rules. There are. There's some rules. But yeah, you know, um, no ice shelters, no, no um, wind shelters, things like that. Right. We want it to be an even playing field for right. everybody. Right. And so you have a one in thousand chance of winning that. Side and by side. who drills those thousand holes for you? The Thunder Bay Walleye Club and a thank bunch you. of volunteers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly, thank you, thank you. And if anybody wants to volunteer yes. to help drill holes or even help at the event, we can use the help. And, it's fun. And is there a number they could call for that, Tanya? They can call 989-464-2274. Uh, and they can go to um, icefishingalpina.com okay. where the prize list is there and all the contact information on how they can help. And we're on Facebook. Well, thank you very much, thank and you. I know this is going to be another tremendous success, and we'll get closer and closer to our River Center actually starting to appear. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be right back with Jennifer Alsup following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Jennifer Alsup, and she is from the Northwest Michigan Community Action Agency. Good morning. Hi, Nancy. It's nice to be here again. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you. Thank and, you as well. um, I know that um, covering five counties yep. like you do, you're very busy all the time, but you have some important information you want to give us today. Yeah, I just um, wanted to spread the word about the program again, um, just to keep it in the back of everyone's minds that I'm out here working these five counties. I cover Alpena, Alcona, Montmorency, Presqu'ile, and Iasco. Okay. And I am a Veterans Housing Resource Specialist. That's okay. a mouthful. And um, I'm from the Northwest Michigan Community Action Agency. Okay. And I work for a grant from the VA called the Supportive Services for Veterans Families Program. And we help veterans that are either literally homeless, as in out on the street tonight, or about to become homeless through eviction. Okay. And so we are a housing first program, meaning the first thing we're going to try to address is their housing and address any barriers that they may have to securing permanent housing. Um, our program works with rentals. We don't get, um, we don't set a home buyer program okay. or anything, but we try to get them into a sustainable rental that's appropriate and affordable for them to have a roof over their head. Okay, so now housing is first. So mm -hmm. obviously there's a reason why they're homeless. How do yep. we address all those reasons? Well, we do a case plan okay. and we usually try to identify the other barriers, you know, why are you homeless? What brought you here? And lots of times um, I can help the veterans address those other areas of their life, whether it's um, referring them to Michigan Works or um, trying to get community mental health on board, just to address any barriers that they might have apart from housing. Okay, and you know, um, I'm really so excited that this program is out here mm -hmm. for veterans. You know, they need to be helped. Right. And you know, there's many different reasons why people become homeless. Oh, absolutely. 
you know, there's, um, you know, medical bills and, mm -hmm. you know, divorce yep. and mental health issues and, and illnesses. Mm -hmm. You know, my motto is there by the grace of God go mm -hmm. I. Absolutely. So um, how do you get your referrals for the veterans? Lots of my referrals come from NEMSCA, okay. which is the main housing agency in the five areas that I cover. Um, lots of times a person might not necessarily know about my program and they know about NEMSCA. Okay. And so they go there and it kind of gets filtered down to me. And I also have a great contact at the VA, R. Ulrich, okay. who I work pretty closely with. Okay. And um, lots of times he is the first point of contact for these veterans. Okay, so you, um, is there any veterans that would not be eligible for your program? Right, we don't work with veterans who have a discharge status that is dishonorable. Okay. But other than that, we can work with them. We can work with uh, a general discharge, general under honorable, medical, and then obviously honorable discharge status. Okay, and say that a veteran needed a place, um, you know, with some accommodations, mm -hmm. are you able to do that? Um, definitely. Okay. And um, we also have an income guideline. Okay. Um, he has to, he or she has to be within 50% of the um, area median income, which for all the five counties that I serve, he or she cannot make more than $19,000 a year. Okay. And most of us that I work with fall well under that. Okay. And to give another example, um, a family of four cannot bring in more than $27,100 a year. And that's pretty generous, I feel. Oh, yes. And most of my vets don't come anywhere close to those guidelines. So a veteran that has a family mm -hmm. would be eligible for your program too, not just a veteran on their own. Oh, definitely. Okay. All right, so you cover the five counties. Yes. Um, if someone is watching or listening and they think, okay, how do we, um, how do we contact you? Mm -hmm. What's the best way for someone to be able to reach you? Um, the best way is to call my agency's intake line, and that's 1-844-900-0500. And they would do a brief intake with our intake specialist over in Traverse City, and then get forwarded down to my caseload. Okay, and um, I've seen, in the rental situation, I've seen people who, um, you know, you don't want to rent to them mm -hmm. because of, you know, bad credit, past right. history. How do you deal with those kind of issues for veterans? It definitely comes up, and I think communication is the key piece to that. Um, I have sat down with landlords and vets even before a lease is signed and kind of had an open communication. Like, um, the landlord, there's things you don't want to see happen in this unit. We're going to put that right into the lease. And so I think clear communication is key and definitely a landlord setting boundaries for that veteran to know what's appropriate and what's not. Okay, so then they, they come in and then how do you handle disputes between landlords? Is that something that you have to do too then? That's something I can definitely help with. Okay. And in the past I found that meeting in a neutral location definitely oh, yes. helps. <laughs> And how long can you help someone with their rent, rental costs? We can help up to six months, okay. but the main focus of the program is to help the vet become self-sufficient. Okay. And so if we can get that done before the six months, all the better. All right, so you help with security deposit mm -hmm. um, and rent. Any, are you able to help with any utilities at all, getting things hooked up and all that kind of stuff every time you move? Right, we can um, help with utilities, but it's... Um, on a case-by-case -case basis, and okay. we look at it, would the veteran be homeless if we didn't pay for this? Okay. And if that's the case, then we can help with utilities. Okay, so obviously you need some landlords Definitely. to come forward. Definitely. So, you know, how, uh, tell me what kind of landlords you're looking for. Landlords that have a heart for veterans okay. um, would be the primary goal. And um, landlords that have affordable units. Okay. And that's becoming harder and harder to find yes. in this area. Um, my coworkers over in Traverse City, that's a daily struggle. I bet. And I used to feel so um, excited about this area because we weren't dealing with that, but it seems like rents are slowly going up. It is. And, and I, I do see that happening because mm -hmm. I help people find find rental units mm -hmm. too and I realize that it's going up and then sometimes as soon as they find out they're getting help from somebody you know they jack the rent up again Absolutely. or add all these restrictions so if there's a landlord who's interested and they say hey I want to help veterans mm -hmm. I, I realize they've paid their dues I really want to help them what's mm -hmm. the best way for a landlord to reach you I would love them to call me on my cell phone okay and I'm at 989-255-5205 okay we have a little bit of time left anything sure. else you want to mention today Jennifer well, I just feel like this program is slowly growing okay. in this area, but we can always use more vets. Um, the VA has given us a pretty generous grant for Good. this fiscal year, and I would just like to see the money used as much as we can. 
Okay, and you do, when you're in your counties, you um, have locations where you can actually set appointments and people can Absolutely. meet face to face with you. And Alpena yeah. happens to be at Michigan Works, but don't just stop there because right. you know, you're not there, you have to set appointments. Yep, yep, because I cover the five counties, I feel like I'm always traveling. And um, Michigan Works has been pretty great in my other counties too, as to letting me set up meetings there. And I know I've seen your um, cards out and about places, so it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to get a hold of you. Definitely. All right, thank you so much for thank being you, here, Nancy. and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster's following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, president of Alpena Community College, and we're pleased to have as our guest this morning, Director of Admissions, Mike Colleen. Mike, welcome. Great to be here. I always enjoy coming in and sort of talking about what's happening, uh, not only in admissions, but at ACC in general. Wonderful. And uh, our topic, our uh, starting topic this morning is enrollment, which looks better. Yeah, it does. You know, right now, I mean, we're just finishing up the first week of classes, and so really all those dropping ads and the students sort of making any of those schedule adjustments has pretty much come to a, a complete. So uh, enrollment's looking good compared to the fall. Uh, typically in the spring, we, we show a little bit of decline, but those have changed, and there could be some factors to it uh, that we think that we've instituted over the last semester or so. Uh, and people are sticking around or coming to ACC and seeing all the great programs we have. Wonderful. And Starting in, say, 2010, uh, mm -hmm. when the uh, economy was very dire, yeah. a lot of retraining dollars, um, our enrollment was about at a peak, and since then it's tapered off pretty significantly. So this is, this is a trans transformation that's good for us. Right, you know, and back then, you know, almost all the community colleges were, you know, sometimes looking at some of their all-time highs and so forth, and, and all of us have sort of trended down, but starting to level off, if not grow a little bit, and, uh, you know, applications for the fall are coming in strong. Some of our programs are, are looking very solid and healthy. So if they're out there thinking even for the fall, I know we're talking for the spring, it's really time to start thinking about that as well. Outstanding. Now you and uh, 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 Dean of Student Services, Nancy yeah. Saya, uh, work together with others to institute mandatory orientation. What's your view of how that's uh, progressed? Uh, you know, I think it's gone real well. Uh, I'm sort of the person who does the uh, presentations here on main campus, and, and Nancy does them down at our Oscoda campus, our Heron Shores campus. And, and I have not had a bad reaction from a student or a parent in my presentations. And the overall idea of it is just to provide information on services and policies, timelines that students need to know to be successful for one class, maybe just a semester, a year, or if they're here for the whole program. And I think some of that's starting to tie into it because I think our retention is what's keeping some of our enrollment up. Um, some other factors as well, but I really think uh, the orientations is a, is a good step forward for ACC. Retention is a key issue. Keeping right. students, once you get them, that right. means that they're getting, they're succeeding and they're mm -hmm. working their way through their program. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So what are some of the strong areas that you're seeing in terms of enrollment right now? Well, you know, I, mean, I, I know you've had Tim Rotts and, and mm -hmm. other people from our welding area on the show in the past. And, you know, Tim sort of took over the welding program you know, about a year ago and has really uh, instituted the new associate's degree and, and his numbers are, are very, very strong. I mean, almost busting at the seams. He's almost overflowing all of his program and all of his classes. So welding's very solid right now. Um, uh, you know, utility tech, our concrete program, some of our technical programs, I call them those employability skills that people yes. may need for, they can get something in a semester or a year, they're not looking to transfer. Um, they just wanna go to work but they need something to put on a resume. Uh, when I'm out in the high schools, I tell people that we live in what I call a certified or credentialed society. Yes. You've got to have something in your back pocket to say, I can do this. And ACC has a number of programs that really help people, you know, medical assistant, our medical coder and biller, uh, our nursing program is, is always strong and healthy. So a wide range. Yes, you and U UTT is, is a program yeah. that draws a lot of Oh, just not just local focus, but but from around the state and, and beyond from Absolutely. what I hear. Absolutely. I mean, I could probably take a, a map of the state of Michigan and throw a dart at it and be within 50 miles of one of our students who have applied. Uh, and just recently I got a call from a student from over in Minnesota. The mom called, had a great conversation, very interested, heard about the program. Uh, they may make a trip over. Uh, I guess Minnesota, Michigan, similar <laughs> weather that we experience. Um, but still, I mean, it, it shows the the the, um, the the different amounts of people that will come from no matter where to get the training that we provide here in Alpena. 
And then it's not just tech programs that right. we offer, as you know, that on the transfer side, we take that very seriously as well. Oh, you bet. I mean, uh, English, math, political science, psychology, speech, all those, I call them core classes to get that Michigan transfer agreement, the old macro for people who may remember that years ago. Uh, those core classes are a great place, smaller class sizes, close to home, more affordable, and then the ability to transfer as long as you're successful. So. Boy, I know a lot of students have done very, very well in that, and, and I say we're two schools in one. We're those liberal arts transfer folks, and then those hands-on, give me some employability skill people, and ACC's got everything. Yeah, I, I just, I hope I'm not uh, speaking out of turn here, but in, in terms of the transfer, we have a, we have a family friend, Stuart Richardson, who oh, took yeah. some courses yeah. at uh, ACC and went off to U of M, did great there. And uh, we found out yesterday that he's been accepted at Cambridge. Awesome. Wow. For a master's degree in Absolutely. the UK. Yeah, so I know who Stuart is. Yes. Good for him. That's great to hear. Yeah, isn't that great? And starting at Alpena, and, and it doesn't matter where, I mean, it can take you anywhere. It really can. You know, as one of our slogans say, few things so close can take you so far. Absolutely. So congratulations, Stuart. Absolutely. Way to go. Um, so uh, early college and dual enrollment is strong? You bet. You bet. You know, dual enrollment is that program where Students are in high school and they're able to take college classes at the same time and we've been able to establish some really, really strong relationships. Alpena High has been great over the years. That is true. Rogers City, Hillman, some new uh, partnerships with Alcona, um, All Gray, Onaway, just a variety of students all over that are sort of getting their feet wet in the college academia world um, as well as finishing up their high school. And, Early college, we're in our second year, and boy, those students are great as well. Um, uh, they're doing really well, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to work with them because they're excited and energetic. And a point person there, Lee Fitzpatrick, okay. doing a wonderful job. We had him on six or eight weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you two guys make a great team. Well, you know, so the, the uh, interrelation between the college and, and APS is very important. Right, and most people can find us because I know Lee's, uh, Lee's <laughs> taller than I, and some people say I'm taller. But, but yeah, me and Lee get along real well, and uh, like I say, well, for the students, and, and the students are, are easy to talk to, and, as are Lee and I. Yeah, absolutely. So if you were, uh, when you're out in, the, in school starting uh, now, what mm -hmm. are you telling uh, the young people there? Well, if you're a high school senior, I mean, it's 2016, and that's your year, I like to say. It's what you've been waiting for. And so it's time to really make sure you have your application for admission in. The ACC scholarship application is now available online uh, on our website, and paper versions will be um, available shortly. You could do your financial aid, the FAFSA. Uh, I know you may be waiting for mom and dad's uh, income information, but the month of February is really a key time to try and get that done. There are things you can do to be preparing for, because it's going to get here quick. And uh, scholarships, financial aid, we'll be sending out information sometime in February about orientations that will be starting in April. Uh, and the sooner the better. Uh, best class availability, um, all of that. So really, ACC, if you have any questions, give us a call. We're, we'll talk to you and uh, um, answer anything you need. And if they wanted to call you, Mike, and you're the answer man on this stuff, what yeah. would that number be? Well, direct number in admissions, 358-7339. Uh, it's 358-7339. Either myself or Sue Geiersbach, my, my secretary, will, will pick it up and we'll, we'll take care of you. Outstanding. Mike, thank you for everything you do for ACC. Thank you, folks, for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week on Talk of the Town. Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The talk of the town furniture and set design are provided by Young Appliance Art Fan Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.